Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, um, Spice Glory, and or whatever you want to call me, Brian. This is the uh, No News, Just Facts podcast, and we back up in the building, man. Um, let's just get right into it. Of course, you know the world is still shaking and everything is still going on. Um, I feel like cancel culture is part of the problem. The amount of dragging that has been going on on Twitter is ridiculous. Just let's just use J. Cole and No Name as an example. J. Cole put out this song called Snow on the Bluff in which he's voicing his opinion about something that was said uh from this rapper girl named No Name in which, you know, I'm paraphrasing here. She said that with all the bloodshed going on, you, we can't even get a tweet from uh your favorite top selling rapper. Um Now, there was no directed name, nobody's name was directed in the tweet that she deleted. But J. Cole felt a sort of way and he voiced his opinion in the most calmest way possible, in the most uh, respectful way possible. Pretty much saying, hey, I understand you, I hear you, but I just don't like your tone and the way you're saying it. How can you yell at all? Of, how can you yell at all of us uh, entertainers and not give us a solution, you know? This is uh this is why it took almost 200 years for slaves to get freed. Like I said, I'm paraphrasing here. You can go find it. The song is called Snow on the Bluff. But after that song, man, J Cole got drug <laughs> through the quintessential mud by Twitter. And everybody on social media, just because he had an opinion, probably either against or like against the words of a black woman, just because he had he had a problem with what a black woman said, that does not make him misogy- misogynistic. What the hell? Like, why? Why? I feel like I feel like people on Twitter just love to make up their own narrative. They love to they love to create their own type of like controversy. If something is some if something is said that they don't like, now all of a sudden J Cole is misogynistic for having an opinion. What kind of bullshit is that? Stupid as hell. Half of the people who have an opinion on on this J. Cole and No Name thing going on, don't even know who No Name is. They don't even, they've never listened to a No Name song. They they don't know a mixtape, they don't know a single. They just trying to create a narrative off of a distraction, which is what this is. This is a whole distraction. This could have been resolved with a phone call. After J. Cole's song came out, J. Cole and No Name should have just got on the phone. Chance the Rapper, who uh, allegedly, who, not allegedly, but he made a comment about it, saying, I know both of them, they're both my friends or whatever. That dude could have fucking got them both on the phone. You sitting up here on Twitter explaining stuff to fans, you could have just... Put them on the phone or got them in a, in a room or something like that so they could talk. Like, come on, man. You adding to the narrative of making a, a black man look bad. Talking about gaslighting. You know who's gaslighting? We gaslighting. Entertaining this this dumbass. I don't even want to call it a beef. This this is <laughs> this is this is turkey. This is turkey. This is not beef. This weird ass beef, like this could have been solved over the phone. 
and we could have avoided all of this. And then No Name got the audacity to put out a diss record after J. Cole's record came out and pretty much just pulled like an oxymoron in which what I'm saying is she complained about, oh, celebrities not doing this and that and the third. And J. Cole made the diss song and she turns around and just like the ego of J. Cole when he made his song, she turns around and does the same thing. Which really like automatically like is like almost like a it's like I said, it's an oxymoron of itself. Because you complain about this and that and the third that artists aren't doing this and that. And then you turn around and do exactly what everybody is shunning J. Cole for. By dragging. Let alone dragging a black man at that. So, um, I, if, in my opinion, neither one of them is right. J. Cole's not right. No name's not right. This all could have been handled over the phone, through text, through direct message, whatever. This could have been handled behind the scenes. So, um, once again, the entertainment industry has found a way to distract us all from the problem at hand in America currently with stupid shit like this. Um, Speaking of dragging black men, in an effort to continue... With what has been um, characterized as slander. Of course you know Lecrae went on. uh, He went and did this sit down. With this white pastor named Louis Giglio. And the CEO of Chick-fil-A. I don't really know. I I can't remember the guy's name. But. (sighs) The white pastor. Went on to say some just. Some craziness about how. Uh, white privilege shouldn't be called white privilege. It should be called white blessing. And he said it in an instance two times. Now, what, what I haven't really been seeing that much is people like reacting to the response of the pastor saying white blessing and 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 saying that pretty much saying that. White blessing, uh, slavery was a blessing, a white blessing, um, so long ago or whatever. And people were reacting to how Lecrae didn't like check this white pastor when he was saying all of this. He just nodded his head and said, uh huh, uh huh. When it happened, you can go look it up. Uh, the pastor says white blessing and everything like that. They put the wrong person in that situation and predicament. They could have got anybody else for that, but they chose Lecrae. And while I understand that Lecrae, you know, Lecrae made a mi- Lecrae made a mistake. I'm a- I'm very angry that you know. Of course, I'm angry that you know that. He he let he let that slip up out of that pastor's mouth without even saying anything at that moment in time. But I mean, it's not like he didn't respond. It's just he didn't respond the way we all wanted him to respond. That's why everybody's dragging him. Oh oh, he's a coon. He's a he's a house nigga. He's Uncle Tom because he didn't respond the way we wanted him to respond. Like I said, this is another case of people not knowing who the hell this is, but. But just criticizing him on the fact of like a video. But he replied and he said whether it's white blessing or or white privilege. Y'all turn a blind eye. Y'all turn on the blinders. Us as blacks, we can't turn off the the blinders. We can't we we, we can't we can't act like we're something we're not or, you know, uh, we can't act like we don't have a culture. And he also went on to say that 
white uh white people uh white people don't have a culture so they expect people to act I expect people to react like they do because you know if it doesn't affect me why are you so hurt about it pretty much is what he said and see nobody is talking about that everybody keeps pointing to what the pastor said and how Lecrae sat there and listened and didn't you know respond quickly and swiftly it was a mistake People make mistakes. We all make mistakes in this world. But I'm not about to condemn Lecrae because he didn't respond when he was supposed to. It was a mistake. I mean, Willie D, legendary rapper, spent nine minutes calling him a coon. And and uh, and, and every other word in the book just because he didn't respond the way he, that that's that's just like on that's just like how it is on twitter we we get mad because there these celebrities are not responding to a crisis i ain't talking about the coronavirus i'm talking about this this opening and awakening of black people in this country and just criti- just a lot of criti- criticizations. I feel like Twitter needs to just like learn how to um Twitter needs to just change up its alg- algorithm, man, cuz it's it's so it's so much hate and slander and dragging and and it, it, we're we're just we're just we're not even we're we're not even looking at the right things right now. We're just all over the place and not paying attention to what we sh- what we still should be paying attention to injustice Brianna Taylor's uh uh murderers being prosecuted and thrown in jail you know we should be taking cues we should we should be we should be continuing to sign petitions and donating money by the way I just want to say that I don't agree with Black Lives Matter as a corporation And here's why Because all this money being donated All this money being donated to Black Lives Matter um, All these companies and corporations uh, Standing by Black Lives Matter This is really a money grab for them If you think about it They don't want to lose Their black uh, Their Their black um consumer if you think about it nike and starbucks i don't even drink starbucks black black people shouldn't drink starbucks starbucks because of the more than one thing the more than one uh accounts of things that have happened with starbucks like those guys getting arrested at in philadelphia uh not you know not being able to wear Black Lives Matter memorabilia, not memorabilia, but uh, apparel at at the job. Like, come on, there, there's something there, and um, I just feel like people need to figure it out and wake up, you know. So, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, uh, the thing with uh, Bubba Wallace and NASCAR. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we got another, uh, how did Dave Chappelle call it, Juicy Smollier? We got another Juicy Smollier here, Jesse Smollett case going on here. Um, I don't think we should condemn that dude. I don't think we should condemn Bubba Wallace the way we condemned uh, Jesse Smollett. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's different. I feel like that's different. I feel like that's different. Like, uh, Jesse Smollett literally lied. Like, Jesse Smollett lied, made up a whole story, hired actors and everything. Hired dudes to, like, fucking say that they were committing a hate crime and they were, like, black or and or Nigerian. 
He committed like a whole perjury Versus Bubba Wallace who I don't know if he found the noose Or whoever found the noose Um, What they said it was like a they said it was like a rope that's been there since like last year or something like that in the, in his garage or something. Um I wouldn't necessarily put this up here up there as a lie, but I would actually put this up there as I think this is just like reporting something. And I feel like they just wanted to find out what it was. This wasn't like Bubba Wallace wasn't fabricating a story and 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 adding all this flash, all these flashy effects like Jesse Smollett was doing. So I don't really, I don't really paint the picture of him lying. I just think like, I think like he was being cautious and he was just like, okay, if this is if this is like a real hate crime or something like that, I just want to make sure that, you know, um, this is not this is not a threat on my life or. A threat to my family or or anything like that so but i'm sure i'm sure people who are nascar fans or something like that because you know there's there are those ones that are probably gonna be like oh he's a fake he's a he's a phony you know he doesn't he doesn't deserve to you know be on the you know on the surface of nascar right now just because you know it looks like he lied so but yeah um what else has been going on Let's see um oh yeah i i had a chance to watch that uh dave Chappelle 846 comedy special it was it was good it was good for the fact that it wasn't really a comedy special like yeah you, yeah I might have like maybe like maybe laughed once during this whole entire comedy special. It was more like a it was more like a TED Talk versus it being a comedy special. Um He just went into a lot of like uh just got it. He it, it's just him getting into a lot of the thing that's going on out here in America, and, um, yeah, it's it's just his his commentary, it's not, I don't really consider this like a comedy special, I consider this one of Dave Chappelle's many commentaries, where he's literally just putting people in, in the, in a space in his brain, and making people understand, like, how he feels, because, when a celebrity keeps quiet, it's like, oh, it's so dangerous that a celebrity is keeping quiet. Maybe some of these celebrities who are quiet just don't know how to respond, you know? I'd rather I'd rather a celebrity be honest with me than be paid to say be paid to say how they feel when it's not really how they feel. You feel what I'm saying? Like I would rather somebody come out and say, "Listen, I don't know how to respond to all of the, all of everything that's going on in the world. But I, I am watching and I am listening. You know, I I would be okay if a, if a celebrity came out and said that, you know, um, yeah, I would be okay if a celebrity came out and said that versus them trying to be fake about it and, and saying, oh, they know about it and, you know going out to march but you you just trying to make yourself look good or or releasing a statement uh, uh releasing a statement that isn't your statement so you have an assistant that typed it up for you that's not those aren't your true feelings or anything like that i would rather just a celebrity that you know uh, my favorite celebrity that I I watch or or my favorite athlete that I watch or or whatever be honest with me. Be honest with me as a uh consumer as a fanatic of them. And that's what I think uh Dave Chappelle was doing here. He was just giving you an honest depiction of what and how he feels. Now the dis <laughs> The dissing was hilarious. He, you know, he went into how he thought uh, about uh, 
Don Lemon and Candace Owens. I think he called Candace Owens a cunt. I have to go. I have to go back and just look at that. He called a. Uh, who he he even had something to say about Azalea Banks talking about they had sex. He's like, I'm gonna tell it like Azalea Banks. It was funny as hell. Um, but this was much needed. Um, I've never really had the chance in my lifetime to see a comedy special that was only like 20 minutes. I would imagine, you know, Dave Chappelle had like this book and I'm sure it's a book full of his, uh, a book full of jokes and a book full of like, uh, just thing, things that he writes down as thoughts. I'm sure this was more than 20 minutes, had to be over an hour, probably, probably, this is probably a over an hour, two hour special that they just chopped down to, chopped down to 20 minutes. And then it's on YouTube, which is surprising because doesn't Dave Chappelle have like a deal with Netflix? It's on Netflix's YouTube, but you know, he signed it. He's like, he has a deal with Netflix. So I would think something like this would be on Netflix. I'm sure it will be at some point. Um, But yeah, this, this was a beautifully... Uh, orchestrated thing done by Dave Chappelle. He had a he made a great point about celebrities not uh speaking out or whatever, because they see what's going on. What what is what what is it? He said that he said what is a celebrity speaking out about the the shit that's happening outside gonna do? Like the the jaw kind of like the 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 jaw rule bit that he did i think in um for what it's worth uh uh let's keep let's let's get jaw rule on the phone you know like what is that supposed to do and i think we need to stop uh investing so much i feel like we need to just stop investing so much time in celebrities like i said if a if a if a celebrity came out and was just honest and said listen i don't know I don't know how to respond to everything that's going on, but I see and I hear. I would be okay with that um, versus them being quiet. But, I mean, if they're quiet, what are you going to do? Are we? Are, are you going to uh, uh, crucify them, which is what the Internet does? They crucify, they crucify any celebrity just because they're not speaking up about this. I got a newsflash for a lot of y'all. Celebrities are not God. Celebrities are... We we hold celebrities to a high standard. We hold them to, to this high standard and we put them on a pedestal and we expect them to speak out on the injustices like they were just... Like we just... We just nominated them to be... Be these people who needed to speak on injustices. Like I, I never nominated the Rock to, the Rock to to speak on injustice. I never, I never nominated Kevin Hart to tell me about injustice. I never nominated Tiffany Haddish to tell me about no injustice. Y'all just expect that from them just because they are of a, a, a certain stature, you know, of a, of a certain uh, lifestyle. We expect them to. To, to be to be out in the streets and, and know about all that stuff when a lot of them a lot of them know nothing about injustice they all have money it's the people that are in the streets that I would I would rather hear than hear a celebrity it's the people in the streets who are looting and burning down things I would rather hear than a, than to hear a celebrity. So stop putting stop putting celebrities on a pedestal, bro. Stop putting them on a pedestal. If they don't if they don't res, if they don't respond, okay. They're not who you thought they were. <laughs> remember remember at the end of the day, they're in a certain tax bracket. They live a certain lifestyle. No matter no matter how we think of them, no matter how we think of them and how we put them on the pedestal, 
this is this is not their game to talk about. This is not their game to talk about. The only thing that they can gain is a uh they the only thing that they can gain is like uh you know made out to be like some made out to be like a certain way to make them look good in which they end up looking like looking like so looking like maybe the the uh 45 45 does a lot of stuff to gain uh make himself look good what makes you think some of these celebrities out here won't do the same especially in a in a time and 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 with what's going on with police brutality and and cops using uh excessive force what makes you think a celebrity won't use that as a way to make their self look good and just live off the plight of black people what makes you think you got to think about that for a second you got to think about that every every single time you wishing for a celebrity to do this and that and the third twitter people twitter people got to think about that too you know it's all a distraction Worry about worry about worry about you and worry about what you can do for the cause. Stop stop dragging stop dragging some of these celebrities, man. Some of these some of these people we think are gonna bring awareness to injustice. It, the only way the only way awareness can be brought to injustice is if the camera phones keep coming out and it keeps getting uploaded to the internet. That's the that's the only way. That's the only way because camera as soon as the introduction of cameras came in, you start to see everything and it it's almost normalized to see a police a police officer thriving off of misconduct and using you know some this type of like this type of like factor where they are in a position of high authority and trying to make people do stuff and 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 telling the person to get out of the car or whatever and being itchy with the trigger finger i mean some people might even go as far as saying that's that's propaganda too especially only showing black people getting shot but i mean now it, it, it's it's not like that i feel like it's it's a lot of different people of color being uh a lot of different people of color being unjustly treated from the hispanics to the blacks you know just people of color especially especially blacks Especially black people. Um, so I don't know. Is there anything else I need to talk about that I care to talk about? Let me see. This is only thirty minutes. Um Oh yeah. <laughs> Coronavirus has recently taken a surge. And now the the numbers in Texas are like twice what they were back in March. Is that a coincidence? I think not. I think it's so much going on with riots and looting and 12 looking looking just crazy out here just just doing whatever that the media is trying to stretch the narrative back to coronavirus and trying to keep people back at the house. So now uh, they're trying to keep people at home just because of these, you know, all these protests, whether it be peaceful or, you know, escalated. They're trying to keep they're trying to keep people in line with this by trying to say, hey. Stay your ass at home. Uh, uh, 
don't come out, you know, people are catching the coronavirus at at will or whatever. I'm not saying that the coronavirus is not a serious thing. I'm just saying that, hey, don't be fooled by everything that you read or see. Don't be fooled by everything that you read or see. Because it's like I said, it's just a coincidence that coronavirus has now had a surge like statistical numbers just they just be <laughs> inflating these statistical numbers if you don't know already these statistical numbers for coronavirus get uh, get surged like every other day and they add an extra 5000 5000 um to a total that's already big and we don't even actually know what the actual number is of people who have uh corona and who don't got corona because we're being lied to we're we're being um we're be, we're they're trying to keep us in line and, and keep us at home again like they did in the beginning of uh what was that march at the beginning of march so it's like you don't know who to believe. You don't know what to believe. You don't know what to believe. That's why I don't, that's why I don't I don't like watching the news because every most of everything is fabricated in a lie. Most of all of that shit is a lie. It's all fabricated and, and propaganda. And I just don't like watching the news. The only thing I, I care to watch the news for is the weather. And I have always been like that since I was a child. I used to watch the news when I was little. And I used to just watch for the weather Because if there's anything That can be More right than anything else on the news It's the weather You know Yeah weather may, weatherman may get it wrong Sometimes but A lot of times the weather Predicts it Predicts better And, and reports better Than the rest of the news the only thing I hear on the the only thing you see on the news is death. Uh 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 what celebrities doing what or what celebrity is going where. Uh uh what what else? What else? What else? What new gadget is out? Uh uh which uh uh who's hiring? Whatever. But most most of the time the news is inflated with death, terrorists, uh, who who they label terrorists. Uh, 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 what, what else, what else, um, what else, and just things to make, uh, things to make people scared, that's pretty much what the news is, the news is there to make people scared, scare people, that's what it is, and that's why I don't really like watching the news, because if, if it's made to make, you know, make you scared, then why watch it? I understand that there are good reasons to watch the news. Maybe whatever is happening in your country or whatever is happening on your local news. And even the local, and you know, cable and local news has their propaganda. Local news is propaganda. It's just copying and pasting everything that uh, cable news is, is, is reporting on. Except, you know, it's not the same thing every every hour on the hour you know they at least they local news at least has the courtesy to fucking change it up cable news will report the same thing all day all day every day for like three weeks so yeah i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i'm getting into a spill about uh what what i think about the news but that's just how it is for me i i seriously cannot sit up here and say i i like I like the news. The only thing I, I would watch on the news is, is the weather. Just to see what it's gonna be like outside. But other than that I don't even I don't even I don't even, everybody gets their news from social media anyway. Social the news the news is kinda the news is kinda dead if you think about it. The news had to come on the internet. Think about that for a second. All these media publications that are on television had to come to the internet because the internet is the strongest force in, in in this day and age. You think about it. 
you hear about everything on the internet. You don't you can't believe everything you read on the internet, but a lot of the news that I see or hear is on Instagram, Facebook. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. That's all that's 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 every time I that's every time I hear about something. It's on the new it's it's on, on the internet. So, I mean the news is kinda like the news the news caping uh, or or bowing down to the internet is just like what happened to like terrestrial radio. Like nobody really listens to the radio anymore. Nobody really listens to the radio anymore. We get all of our music, we hear or listen to all of our music on the internet. On uh let me see, what is it? On on YouTube, on my mixtapes, on on uh Audio Mac, um, Apple, Apple, Apple iTunes. Uh, 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 what else? What else? Spotify. All these different places to stream music. XM Satellite Radio. All these different places to stream music, and nobody is paying attention, and nobody's listening to the radio. I remember I used to I used to listen to the radio all the time when I was younger. But now, but now, in in the coming years, since technology has developed and and grown and processed into something that we need every day, as far as like cell phones and tablets and things of that nature, they've built apps for music. So now you don't need the radio, which is why it's easy it's easier for somebody who's an independent artist to blow up, because. The internet is there. They can make their money from the internet. They don't need a record company. You don't need to be signed or anything like that. You can do everything yourself. It takes a lot of work, but it, it's it's easier to do that than to have to deal with uh, shady business dealings of a record company. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, y'all, but I'm just I'm just ranting. <laughs> I'm just trying to get it all out. I'm trying to make sure I get everything out that I can. That has happened, you know, since then. Uh, just a quick thing about Juneteenth real quick. Juneteenth happened uh, last week. And I just want to say that I've known about Juneteenth uh, since I got out of high school. And I didn't know how to celebrate it. As a black man, I didn't know how to celebrate Juneteenth. Like, I knew what it, I, I knew the history and I knew what Juneteenth as a day meant. But... It's like I don't know how to celebrate a holiday that uh, that I you know I I just learned about or whatever, I, and I'm not saying I just learned about it. I'm saying that when I found out about Juneteenth out of high school, it's so funny that they don't teach us. Like I never heard anything in in school about a day called Juneteenth. I don't even think that shit was in a history book. But, you know, as soon as I hear about it and everything like that, it's like, I don't know how to go about celebrating Juneteenth. I don't. It's just like, it's just another another day to me. It's just just another day to me. But I mean, now, now that the world is aware and everything like that, and there's a significant way to um, find out about Juneteenth. Because Juneteenth should be... It's ridiculous that it's not teaching, taught in schools. There are a lot of things about uh, public school or even private school that they don't teach, you know, people of color. We don't really know anything about our, our history. We Black people, uh, we, we only know about the... The history books only tell us about the civil rights movement. They only tell us about the civil rights movement, and that's it. Uh, the the uh, Latin, Latin population of America, I don't even think they they talk about uh, unless we're talking about Texas history with uh, Pancho Villa or or something like that. There's no, there's not really anything in a history book that has to do with a a, a Latino person. I mean, uh, unless we're talking about the Zoot Suit riots, and I don't even think that's in the history books. I learned about that outside of school. So, I mean, there's a lot of things being kept out of these history books. And I, I feel like 
the parents, uh, black parents, Hispanic parents, whatever, what have you, need to teach their children about their heritage, or at least, you know, put it in their head to do research and find out about uh, Black Wall Street or... uh, you know certain certain events that have happened you know learning the history of why it is called Juneteenth or what the reason is of Juneteenth just just figuring that out i feel like it's an obligation amongst like you know the newer generation of parents to instill it in their kids and i'm talking about like at a young age like maybe like 10 years old you should just start teaching them about their heritage their culture because you know if you never know about your culture, you're going to have the question mark on your face up until you're an adult. And you're going to be like, wow, how did I miss out on all this information? It's because they're not teaching you. They're not teaching. Uh, they're not teaching us this in in in, in high school and in, in middle school and elementary at all. You know, so. Yeah, I I just didn't know how to celebrate Juneteenth. That's. Why it was just considered just another day for me because I, I didn't I didn't know how to celebrate it, but I'm aware now, <laughs> and I and I know what to do now. Um, so there has been a thing going around about uh, Beethoven being black, and that the picture. I guess like the historical picture that has always gone around was like a black and white picture and it didn't really show Beethoven's color. Like I said, this is a reach to me. I feel like this is a reach because, you know, (laughs) boy, black people, we just want to claim anybody and anything, right? Oh my goodness. The internet was going crazy off of that. Beethoven was, was black now everybody wants to listen to Beethoven in the comforts of their own home or listen to it on their cell phone or the tablet or on their computer. It's it's actually pretty funny to me. Um but it speaks to a bigger narrative of uh like with with uh Egypt, like with any movie that's uh uh with any movie that's that has to do with Egypt, uh why is it always uh white people? Who are wearing um, wearing the riches and, and and kings and queens? Why is there no you know black people? Because uh, you know of course black people were Moors. You know those those were the those were the kings and queens in Egypt or whatever. Just do your research. I'm not going to get into a whole thing about it, but that is why there has always been a narrative about you know why is it always white people. Be, uh, depicting you know kings and queens in Egypt and not black people because black people were the black people were rich and had their own legacy of being kings and queens so why are we not depicted in these movies that are set in those times of Egypt you know so that just that just speaks to that narrative um but with beethoven i i don't think he was i i i i i really doubt he was african american i think he was i think he was white <laughs> I, that's just me i think i think they're reaching i think the internet is reaching for for a, a, a narrative on that one um yeah i just think that that they're reaching for a narrative narrative on that one but uh that's enough. I think I think I'm going to just uh end it right here. I think I've been talking too much, maybe probably ranting or raving a little bit too much for y'all to care <laughs> what I'm saying. Y'all may disagree, y'all may agree, but hey. As long as as long as we, we we're we're trying to be knowledgeable about the situation and there's no slander or dragging involved and you know, we can come to a conclusion of we can come to a conclusion of agreeing to disagree, then hey, that's all it is. Let's just be respectful about it. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong or if you're wrong, 
Let's let's just agree to disagree. I'm not I'm not gonna kill I'm not gonna destroy you just because we don't have this we we uh we don't agree on something. But anyways, man, hey, I will be back probably soon with another podcast. Just trying to get my feet wet and just let y'all know that I'm hey I'm still here. Just been um trying to keep under wraps during this uh quarantine thing during this corona uh covoid 19 thing you know so uh y'all stay safe out there y'all take it easy and um it's not illegal to learn it's not illegal to do research so do it before it becomes illegal y'all take it easy <laughs>